Hello and welcome to Lord of the Rings Realms in Exile. We played this mod a while back and it was missing a little bit of polish, a little bit of content, but it was still enjoyable. Now it has more polish, it has more content, let's see whether it holds up to its potential. Ah, now, what character are we going to be playing? We're going to be playing Steward Denethor II, who is an interesting character in the story because he kind of fits into a lot of it through his sons. We have Baromir who goes and joins the Fellowship, we have Faramir off fighting Sauron's armies, and we have Steward Denethor who is holding the title which Aragorn is coming to get. So, we have a lot of different things going on. There are apparently events for Return of the King as well, so which kind of adds in a little bit more fun. Now, what's interesting is that we're 69 years old, which in um, Crusader King's terms would mean that we're kind of close to death, so it could lead to some very interesting alternative world scenarios. If we die, in theory, our title would go to Boromir, and then Boromir would be the person who's running Gondor, and that could change a whole bunch of other stuff, and I'm interested to see how the mod deals with that, because it recommends this character as one of the characters that you play, so I assume that it's one of the ones that's got the most polish around it. So, I'm going to read the description of Denethor uh, for you here, just so you get a rough idea of what kind of character we're getting into, and then we're going to jump into game. I will not forget it nor fail to reward that which is given. Fealty with love, valor with honor, oath-breaking with vengeance. Denethor II, steward of Gondor, is a reserved and harsh man, but his temperament matches his kingdom. For years now, he has parried every thrust made by Mordor, and under his steely leadership, Gondor has held the line against increasingly impossible odds. In any lesser kingdom such a man would have long ago rightfully named himself king, but Denethor is no lesser man. Steward he is, and Gondor his charge. Secluded in the White Tower, the steward of Gondor prepares the defense of his realm, but despair lurks in the shadows, biding its time. Welcome to Gondor. Gondor is a large amount of land. However, one of our goals for the series is going to be to expand it. We have a couple of decisions in here that I think are very worth pursuing as part of our goals. We have Integrate Andrast and Recover Harondor. Both of these are bits of land, so if I have a look at one of these, like Andrast, you'll see, uh, if I get the right map mode here, Andrast is this bit of land down here. We definitely want to go down there, kind of unify it and bring it under our control. That's, that's one of our goals. Another one, if I switch the map mode and remember the right button. Oh, I have switched the map mode, fantastic. Um, is to recover Harandor. So, this is the kingdom. And if I close it and then click on it here, it should pop up and show us where it is. So, Harandor, down here. So, basically, get this bit of land, get this bit of land. It should all be a Gondor and we should basically control most of the Bay of Belfalas. Another goal that we have, however, is destroy Mordor. We could potentially try and push back Sauron, not just to hold our land, but to remove him permanently. And that, that would be some feat. However, there are quite a few other bits here that we're gonna need to get. If I have a look at this, you'll see we need this one, I think we need this one, and there's definitely one other one that we need as well. What is the other one? Uh, it is, so we need this one, ah, this one as well. So these little bits of land, so actually we need the Druidan Forest, which is actually one bit of land, a couple of these small ones here, and then, uh, what was the other one? I know, mind like a sieve, uh, and then the other one is all of this land, so just a little bit of the edge of Mordor, and then we can launch our final war, which will be pretty sweet if we can get that going. Now, it's not gonna be plain sailing, Mordor, I'm fairly certain, are going to attack us. We're going to have a lot of other things going on as well, but that's kind of the goals I want to work towards when nothing else is happening. Now, who are we? Who is Denethor? Well, Denethor is actually 70. Interesting. He's 69 in the character select, but 70 here. Weird. Anyway, Denethor is intelligent, Midas touched, he's a widow, which means he may not marry, Avarice is from our lifestyle, as is Architect. 
But he also has this trait, the strong uh, Numenorian blood. If I'm saying any of this wrong, please let me know and I will try and uh, sort that out. But anyway, he has the strong blood, which gives him a whole bunch of benefits to do with his health, which is actually going to keep him alive a little bit longer than you might expect. So his life expectancy is actually up 60 years. And that's not including the fact that he starts with a health boost. So he's actually going to be significantly older than we might expect if he was to die. Well, die from old age. So he might end up being like 130, something like that. So there's there's a lot of time left on Denethor for us playing him. And we don't need to worry about marrying someone else because he's a widow. We have two sons, however, who will carry on. Uh, we have Boromir. Boromir does not have strong blood. He actually only has remnant blood. Um, which gives him a life expectancy of plus 20 years. So we're looking like a 80 to 100 for um, Boromir. And Boromir is kind of our... Uh, he's our favourite son. However, he may not be our most talented son. As we have Faramir here, who has the strong um, blood as well. And he gets all of these other benefits. However, we're mostly going to focus on Boromir. Because he's our heir and, you know, favoured son and all that. However, we don't need to do a lot of them. They have their own realm. We could potentially try and marry them off, but beyond that, there's not a lot else that we need to worry about. What's this one? So, decision available. Gaze into the planeteer of Minas Anor. Now, this does sound like it's something that we could do. However, um, it does also say the planeteer of Minas Amor could be a potent weapon, but is it worth the risk? I don't think we want to do this yet because it, it's saying is it worth the risk basically tells me uh, maybe we should wait until we need it. What else have we got here? We've got a dynasty legacy. Let's see what we've got. Um, so we'd be looking for something which is going to um, kind of fit our stewards of Gondor thing. Desirable match? No, no, no. Um, bounteous loins? Vibrant court? Maybe. Better guests being attracted kind of fits it. Um... Mostly fair, popular opinion. House of Warriors? House of Warriors! Yeah, we're constantly at war. House of Warriors, I think, fits us a lot better. Right. Lifestyle. Now, we're, we are a steward, so stewardship makes a lot of sense. We've already finished two of these. Do we want to go down Administrator? Claim thrown, thrown against your liege really doesn't give us anything. Domestic affairs, vassal levy contribution. That's, that's actually kind of good. Monthly tyranny. Direct vassal opinion and liege opinion doesn't matter. Councillor opinion. Vassals are less likely to join independence factions. They give us more stuff, and then we get administrator. You know what? We could we could stay with this for a little bit. I don't think there's too many bad things on this path. Um, let's go there with just a domain focus. The my land and the people under my care are my strength. Yeah, that kind of fits us a little bit. Right, heir is unmarried. Let's see whether we can find somebody who fits uh, Boromir here. So. Uh, we might be looking for an alliance with someone, so I would assume that the Riddermark with King Theoden would be a good place to potentially grab an alliance. He seems like one of the larger nations around here. And if we were looking at the places we want to attack, we want to attack here, we want to attack here, and we want to attack here. So it doesn't leave us with a lot of options if we want to marry into another family, because basically it leaves us with like all of these small ones up in this land, but not really a lot else, unless we want to go for one of them as well, but yeah, it, it's not really a lot of options. Who's it suggesting? Who, who? The High Lord, is this uh, somebody who's underneath us? Yes, okay. So potentially if we're worried about internal factions, we could go with that. I'm not really worried about that. Let's see what else we got with alliance power. These are the highest alliance powers we can get, okay. Uh, let's switch to the uh, for a different tact. Let's have a look at the Ritter Mark and see if we can find anybody here who we could potentially get an alliance from. Unmarried. Uh, she's 44 years old, however. We have Theoret. And, yeah, nobody else really here who we could potentially marry. So that's going to put a bit of a downer on marrying uh, somebody here. Is there anybody who's lower down, like in Eastmark? Is there somebody we could potentially marry? Eomir, Eowyn, no, they're a little bit too uh, young. Uh, Harrowdale, nope. Westmark, nope. We already looked at the Riddermark. Uh, Hartalf, again, not really a lot of people available to marry in there. So we're not going to get a perfect marriage from. Uh, is there anywhere else that we could potentially look at? Uh, that's the wrong map mode. 
Yeah, so we could look in this area here as well and see if there's anybody around. The, these are uh, Doneldons, who I'm not entirely sure we... Yeah, they don't seem to like us very much. Let's maybe move on from them. Uh, here, just seeing if we've got anybody else who happens to have a daughter. Does anybody have a daughter? Oh, these people really don't like us. Yeah, it turns out uh, friends are hard to come by here. Who would have thought? Uh, these people don't hate us as much. They just kind of slightly hate us. 16-year-old Ethelberg. Would you consider a marriage, Ethelberg? Uh, let's see. Would you consider a marriage to... I guess I can't do it from this screen. Yeah, so Ethelberg. Uh, she has 11 Marshall. Let's see whether I can marry him off here to Ethelberg. She's not on the list. I assume we can't marry him to her. I was just using Marshall as our first step to have a look. So when we get down to 11, let's see. Uh, Ethelberg. Yeah, Ethelberg. So they could marry. Um, Horsemaster is a good trait that she has. She's not bringing anything uh, genetic to the equation, but I think this could be an okay ma uh, marriage. Gives us an alliance. It's not an amazing alliance, but hey, it's people who previously wouldn't be working with us. Let's go, let's go with that. Let's go with that uh, marriage. Cool. Right. Uh, let's see what else we've got. We can vassalize someone. Well, that seems good. Um, who can we vassalize? Uh, Arl Nu. Okay. So where's that? Oh, wow. That's quite a bit of land we can vassalize, really. Well, I'll have it. Thank you very much. Uh, we can negotiate an alliance with Lord Barmir. Uh, we definitely should do that. Yep. And then we wait a second or two and let the game play out. Steward of Gondor. Oh, wow. Okay, we're, we're getting a uh, paragraph and paragraph. Let's go. For 25 generations, the stewards of Gondor have kept a vigilant watch over the lands of Gondor, serving as its keepers and highest authority until the return of a rightful claimant to its kingship. Hardships, innumerable and often terrible, have come to pass during these times. There is no peace for the men of Gondor, can afford no such relief. Men are raised into soldiers instead of scholars, and iron is wrought into devices meant for war and nothing else. The kingdom's strength is waning. To the east, a great shadow stirs. A nameless fear besieges the eastern shore. Patrols vanish without a word, and tradesmen are harried along the coasts. The decisive hour approaches. And for the kingdom of Gondor to endure it, we'll need the likes of Curian or Echtelion to lead its people. In this hour, the burden lies upon the steward, uh, upon the steward Denethor II. He is a man loved by few, grim and stern by nature, often secluded in the White Tower. His bearing is as, co is as a king of old shrewd and wise in his conduct and policy, and guided by his steely will, Gondor has endured increasingly terrible odds. But a shadow is upon the heart of the steward, and as the long years of his watch lengthen, despair finds root within the whispering dark. Uncertain is the future of Gondor. It stands on a razor's edge, and a single breeze could cast it down into the depths of darkness but likewise it could perhaps be restored to its former greatness just as quickly. Whatever might occur, in this moment the looming shadow moves ever westward, encompassing all with its darkness and destruction. There is an evil in Mordor that does not sleep, so we must prepare he comes. We get an army of 1,200 men in Minas Tirith, and... Yeah, we'll see how it goes. Is this Minas Tirith over here? We have formed our alliance, which is good. Yes, I believe it is. Wait, where's our men? Did not just say we got an army of 1,200 men? Oh, I guess they just added them. Yeah, they must be added like mercenaries, maybe? Possibly. Possibly. Or maybe this is them? No, that's not. Oh, right, they're special soldiers down here. Cool. And will be inherited upon succession. Well, that's neat. Okay. I like that. Well, we'll continue chilling for a second or two. We have got vassalization of this person. We have formed an alliance with Boromir. Now let's see what we've got. We can transfer this vassal to their rightful liege. Well, this seems like a sensible thing to do, yes. Right. 
Let's see what else we got. We can challenge criminals to trial by combat. I'm not entirely sure I want to do that. Wait, okay. Um, yeah, I don't really want to ch challenge these people to trials by combat. I suspect I would just lose. Yeah, that doesn't sound like a good plan. I'm going to let the game run a little bit. See if there's any more story events. If there's not in like two months, then we're going to go. Okay, I think we're ready to go. So, um, we should maybe be looking along here to see if there's any armies that we want to be picking up here. I'm also not very pleased with having the enemy right next to my border. That incredibly worries me. That is incredibly worrying to me. Can I, um, let me just raise some troops here. Uh, yeah, let me do that correctly here. So it's, oh, I already had one. Cool. Uh, wrong button. Sorry. Sorry. Raise all. I just want to check something. Okay, so we can cross here, but you can't cross anywhere on the river, I think. Let me move this check here. Yeah, so we, you can only cross at the bridge. Got it. Okay. Just wanted to double check that that was the case. So it's not quite right next to us. We've got a little bit of a buffer, but not a lot of a buffer. Right, let's disband that army there. Cool. Right. Um, if I was to attack someone, where do you think would be the easiest to attack? I think getting this land down here seems very easy. It's lots of tiny little bits that could be, you know, picked up without much hassle. So, let's start working our way down here. Uh, if I move our rally point over here, let's just see. Uh, where's the bridge? Again, I pressed the wrong button. I do apologize. Okay, so we can just cross here. No problem. Right. Disband all of these guys. Uh, disband all. Yep. Uh, right. So if I wanted to attack this person, do I have a CB for attacking you? I can Holy War. Okay. The problem with a Holy War is it could drag in other people. Let's have a look at the religion. Uh, so it doesn't look like your religion, yeah, your religion kind of goes up here, but it's not completely spread. Also means I probably don't have a CB against these guys, uh, so I might want to start fabricating one. I actually haven't even looked at my council. Do they look alright? Spymaster looks like he could be improved. Potentially. Are you, uh, a better Spymaster? No, you're, you're significantly worse. I was just checking whether he's good at anything else. Are you okay at Spy Mastery? Nope. No, nobody can, nobody's any good at Spy Mastery anyway. It doesn't matter. Uh, okay. You're going to try and make foreign people like us. You're going to collect taxes. You, fabricate claim. Yes, I want you to try and fabricate a claim on this land over here. By fabricate, I mean find the proper documents that say it was always ours forever. Right. And now let's attack these guys. Let's go. Declare war. Holy war for county. Yeah, that's fine. It costs us 100 piety, which doesn't seem like an issue. Right. Uh, anything in here that we need to worry about? No, we can call in our ally, but this isn't really the kind of war where we need to call in our ally. We'll let our men raise up. This seems like enough men, and then we'll just kind of go over there. Wonder if anyone's going to join them. I would not uh, be positive on anyone joining them. Also, uh, is Farmer not able to marry anyone? Cannot marry. Oh, all right then. E easy enough. It mu Wait, is it due to his government type? Uh, potentially. Yeah, potentially. Um, yeah, it must be because of this. But anyway, doesn't really matter. What matters is he can't marry. So we'll, we'll just not worry about it. I was just realizing that we uh, we uh, cared about uh, Boromir, but then didn't care about. Uh, Faramir at all, so there you, ha there you have it. My Chancellor has worked hard to convince our neighboring realms and vassals that peace treaty I entered with Lord uh, Vorondil of Arlefnu is flawed and illegitimate and unfair to me. Oh, well, no, that's fine. He's my vassal now. It doesn't... Okay, well, whatever. Thank you, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Oh, thank you for the money. Oh, yes, I should have a look at Gondor itself, or Minas Tirith. Uh, because uh, we have a special building. We have uh, Minas Anor, which is Defender Advantage plus 16. Huge supply limit and a fort level. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is how we keep our land. We just fight there. And pretty much only there if we can make it happen. What else could we make here? We could do marches to increase our Defender Advantage even more in the Duchy. 
You know what? We're, we're defenders. I think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, a lot of sense. Yeah, let's do that. Right, back over to the uh, war. We'll just let this take through. It's kind of a nice casual war. Oh, they're going to attack us again. Okay, we captured three enemy combatants. We'll figure out what to do with them after the war. Uh, I'm not really sure what our options are. They might, might just be release them. But we might be able to convert their faith in things, which would probably be uh, beneficial. Right. We have now taken this. And let us enforce our demands. Nice. Um, yes, enforce demands. To the obnoxious steward Denethor, may your years be short and miserable. You are a much greater foe than I imagined. Cool. Right, disband the troops. Let's see what our options are. We should feudalize it. Um, I think we can probably just give it away rather than having to uh, do that ourselves. We have a bunch of prisoners. Let's see who we got. So we have this person. Uh, anyone want to pay any money for you? No. Well, let's negotiate your release. I will demand your conversion. I could recruit as well, but I think I'll just let her go. Right. Demand conversion, let her go. You're also not really that good at fighting. Anybody want to pay for you? No. Well, release, demand conversion, let them go. You? Same thing. If they're not good at fighting, we just demand their conversion and let them go. You're actually just terrible at fighting. Demand conversion, let them go. Vud? They're all awful. Okay. Demand conversion, let them go. Right. Wait for all of those to go through. Fantastic. I gotta say, I love the music in this mod. It's really good. A, a lot of it is, um, like, just, it all sounds vaguely like uh, the movie's music, but it, it's, it's, it's good. Yeah. It, it sets the, um, the mood quite well. Right. Um, do we want to do another war? I think we can do one more war. Yeah. Uh, you have no allies. Let me move uh, over here. And we can work on you. Right. Declare war. Holy war for a uh, county. And all of this I'm doing with full knowledge that at some point Mordor might attack us. But you know what? I'd prefer to have more land when they arrive. So yeah, I'm happy to keep going. I should have given away this land before we did the war. It's not really that big a deal. Uh, although we are actually able to hold on to it because our um, stewardship is so high that our domain is the domain limit is just really high. In fact, it's high to uh, as a base as well by the looks of it. Yeah. Uh, can I f just click feudalize? Yeah. Cost me 500 gold. That's pretty expensive. I think I'd just prefer to upgrade my holdings actually at 500 gold. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Yeah, we, we might just give it away. Right, let's raise our troops. Uh, I actually probably don't need either of those ones. Let's just go for the main one. I'm actually starting to think some of the music might literally just be the mu the um, the music from the movies, but that's okay. Yeah, I think this particular track is, <laughs> which uh, make makes sense. But still, that doesn't change the point that it does set the mood. Oh. Well, that was an easy enough war. We captured the leader. Let's just enforce our demands. Cool. I'll have that land. We'll disband the troops. And look at that. We got a little bit of extra land at the end there. We're already fast on the way to getting our kingdom, which will then hopefully just integrate into Gondor and not be a separate kingdom. Uh, I'm assuming that's what this is saying here. Does it say it? Uh, it just says it'll be under control. Uh, ruling stewards of Gondor become the de jure uh, liege of the king. Oh, or is, is Gondor a... Ah, Gondor is an empire tier title. You know what? Makes a lot of sense. In fact, we gave land for... We gave a duke to a king earlier, so that makes a lot of sense. Cool. Right, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, and I only say this at the um, end of the first episode of a series please consider liking commenting subscribing com uh, pressing the bell all of that sort of stuff it really helps in the first episode of a series to increase search ranking and it uh, just generally helps the channel grow so thank you for watching i'll see you next time goodbye